There's a lot more to the country than just cashmere. For the last few months of the pregnancy, Zaya wore a marmot tail. Yes, we've got some wonderful news. What is that material? It uh, comes from sheep tail. Mm. <laughs> I'm Stuart and this is Zaya. Normally we are sailing our reasonably priced catamaran, lucky fish, across an ocean or around the islands. But this year we stayed in Mongolia to have this little guy. And this is his story so far. Subscribe and join our journey. Five months gone. Yeah, first time I felt the baby movement. It's like a little fish moving around <laughs> in the water. Here's a few reasons why we'll be making Mongolia part of Leo's upbringing. There's a lot more to the country than just Kashmir. The country is home to a peace-loving people with a rich history and culture. So long as you're prepared to overlook the bit about Genghis Khan. <laughs> It has a vibrant capital, Ulaanbaatar, affectionately known as UB, with a rapidly modernising city centre, with French sailing clothing manufacturers. Really? But in all seriousness, one of the great attractions of Mongolia for me, and indeed any expat who lives here, is the fact that the local people can still think for themselves. It's about as far from a nanny state as you can get, and I think that's wonderful. And despite all this modernisation, the nomadic culture still runs thick in Mongolians' veins. It gives everyone a sense of freedom here. For the last few months of the pregnancy, Zaya wore a marmot tail around her waist and a marmot knuckle bone on her ankle. These items had been passed down through the family. Legend has it that a marmot never miscarries. It is yes. pointing down, ready to... Okay, ready. yes. With launch date looking imminent, it was off to the local photography studio to get the obligatory pregnancy photos. Hey everyone, that building behind me is a maternity hospital. Yes, we've got some wonderful news. Four hours ago, Zaya delivered a very beautiful and healthy baby boy. We're over the moon. Zaya's recovering well and uh, the news is all good. Many of you will remember Sister Toya from our Atlantic crossing. Really? <laughs> yeah, that's lovely Toya. So this is to keep the spirits at the night time away. You can imagine that herd is sitting in their gurs with a bit of sheep's wool making animal shapes. He's a very foxy looking fox with a big bushy tail and pointy ears. Pointy nose. Pointy nose. Yeah, he's going to hang like that and put it under his pillow and tell him. Here we go. Little fox is going to keep an eye out for you. So don't be afraid. And for goodness sake, don't wake up while I'm doing this. <laughs> Sweet dreams. Zaya and Leo left the hospital after four days. What's this for, Dave? This is for preventing his tummies get shaken from the road. So this is a bottle of water. And Interesting. <laughs> A week later, the three of us went to a baby health retreat on the outskirts of the city. There we learned about local methods for caring for newborns and new mums too. Hello, my name is Samantha. I am uh, working in a hospital like 
like it's uh, taking off new burns. What do you need? The uh, we need the we need the milk truck, darling. Okay, Two of them. Let me get it. Just been tormented with a bath. Torment it was. But got my head under the water for the first time. <laughs> yeah, and cried about it. <laughs> As you've gathered by now, we've named him Leo. It was Zaya's first suggestion, and after a couple of months of looking at all the other names, we ended up right where we started. It's okay when you're in. It's also short for my dad's middle name, Leonard, my star sign, MGM's mascot, and most importantly, King of the Cats. Leo, Leo. Mm. What is that material? It uh, comes from sheep tail. Mm. And it's good for baby? What does it do? Yeah, it's good for health for Mongolians actually. Yes. Because Mongolia is very cold and higher country. Well, he's absolutely loving it. <laughs> uh, after uh, four and five days, days uh, he will like Massaging? Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. It's the first time for him. Yes. So that's why, like, uh, he feels like a yes. little bit scared. Mm. Sumo wrestler workout, isn't he? This is a prize athlete stuff. Foot yeah. massage, leg massage. Full body massage. Full body massage. Goodbye, goodbye. I think he's getting to like this. Mm -hmm. What do you think about his feet? Do you think he's going to be a big boy? Big boy. Do you, when you look at a dog, you know, if it has big paws, you know the dog's going to become a big dog. Yeah. Ah, like you. <laughs> uh, Mongolian <laughs> people, I think uh, he's around one, three kilo. Mm -hmm. Yes. Three kilo. Yes. And, but in Mongolian people, three kilo is very small, very shorter than Short he is. Yes. And but more. Yeah. More very fat. fatty and but his uh, foot and arms is very big. Like you. They're long but thin. Yeah, he's, very long. He's quite skinny. Mm. No gas. No gas. No gas. That's good, uh -huh. isn't it? That's a nice deep massage, gosh. Yeah, <laughs> you're liking that, aren't you, eh? This was Zaya's first time swaddling him. It seems a bit alarming to our Western traditions, but I definitely saw Leo relaxing once he was tightly bound. It's like a little doll. We were pretty cautious about how long we did this, and after the first few weeks, we started letting him loose a lot more. He definitely likes that too. You interested in that? Are you? That's his anti-shake little bottle. Don't worry, it's not so tight, okay? Mm -hmm. So his legs are still free. I'm ready to go out. Here you go, Daddy. Next door to the hospital lives a shaman. You can see him here making offerings to the four points of the compass. And here's another reason why we'll be making Mongolia part of Leo's upbringing. While the West is worried about the Orwellian future that China has in store, who better to look to but one of China's neighbours who survived the influence for centuries. And it's largely due to this fellow here, Sukbata, who in the 1920s saw the Chinese out. It's a remarkable story of tactics and strategy and well worth looking up. This black tea bath is good for the skin. They do have a, a bone soup or bone bath, bone mm -hmm. soup bath. Okay. That's also very good. But he can't have any because his navel isn't falling off yet. Right. 
So what does bone soup bath do? Yes, they should chew and sing it out here. Then you have to get here, get to the book and sister. You just had no way to get to the shooting dog. Tatia, that releases baby's tiredness and give them, give them energy. And uh, yeah, good for many things. <laughs> the hospital takes care of new mums too. Everything from massages to cupping, a treatment that's becoming popular in the West. After four very relaxing days at the health retreat, we headed home to resume preparations for the new arrival. How are you doing, bunny? Recycled plan. Yeah. Recycle, reuse. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. I mean, that's 10 years old, right? And there's the pram. All parts working. No plastic parts broken after 10 years of three babies. That's not bad. My nephew's pram. He's now 10 years old. Turned out it was a good pram. Yeah. Good Funny enough, I bought it for him. <laughs> when, I, when you I would be using it. Oh, by the way, here's the man in question pretending he's sleeping. But if I put him down, he'll let me know he's not. By a small stroke of luck, our apartment is right next door to the Soviet built Ulaanbaatar headquarters for the Trans Siberian Railway, with its beautiful gardens, which are perfect for airing the baby. It's the uh, State Department store at the end of the highway there, or the end of the road. Date on the top, 1924, that's the year that Mongolia got its independence from China. It was very quickly established along the lines of a lot of Soviet-style supermarkets. In fact, I walked into the one in... Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and it was exactly the same on the bottom floor jewellery, next floor up women's haberdashery, <laughs> third Which floor linen, Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan. It was like being in the State Department store in Ulaanbaatar. These cars on the right are in the bus lane, they're breaking the law, but they also get there quicker. Iggy is a very skilled driver. Sister Iggy, who's driving? <laughs> and Zyra, of course, and there's wee Leo in the back. Sorry. What's it like being a mum? Oh, it's nice. <laughs> just the nice. <laughs> just nice. <laughs> it's not just us anymore, it's three of us. Stuart loved being a father, right? I do, yeah. It's wonderful. He's a cutie. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe, maybe the viewers can tell us if he looks like you or like me, or is he a mix? Can you see his face? I think they can, yeah. <laughs> he looks pretty chubby. He, one of the great <laughs> joys is seeing him put on weight. I mean, you love them while they're so tiny, but you do want to see them grow as well. It's funny. This place we're going to is uh, called 100, 100 Families. It's a district in Ulaanbaatar. Um, it's also where the state registration office is for new births and foreigners like me and all the rest of it. We come out here from time to time and deal with the red tape and the bureaucracy. But maybe Eggy here, who's a real estate agent, so if you're ever thinking about buying any property here in Ulaanbaatar, Eggy's your, your agent. Now, Eggy might be able to explain a little bit about the history of 100 families because it goes back to Soviet times, doesn't it? Or even earlier. Hundred family. What's the history of um, this suburb? Why is it called a hundred families? Um, so ah, uh, so I thought yeah, it must have been hundred Chinese families. Yeah, this is a Chinese oh. still they live here. Door Street, you know. Right. So this was Chinese time. Yeah, it was full of Chinese, and then the time they got chased out. So what what happened when they left? Uh, you know the Chinese people. 
Yes. They keep their money. They yeah. work so hard and they don't spend it all and they keep all their lifetime saving in their home. Yeah. Some of their money is hidden in their house walls, you know. Bastard. They couldn't get their money when they so, uh -huh. were chased away. Yeah. Also, there's a rumor um, lots of ghosts hang out. Hang out. Hang around. Oh, in this place here, yeah. Because they 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 kept their money, so they their soul wouldn't wouldn't leave, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Even after death. This is the this is the street of a hundred families right here. This is the state registry for births. Normal chaos. Strangely enough, things get done in the end, though. Looking for room 306, there's 305. Three oh four, three oh two. And that one's a toilet. What happened? I just got the directions of what to do. What do we do? So you have to write the we both have to write a request letter. Yes. Of, um, being Mia's father and mother, oh. you need to write down that uh, oh, you're yeah. agreeing to register him in, in the Mongolian okay. registry. Oh, okay, interesting. Because there is sometimes there is a complication of uh, mother and father's consent to nationality. Yeah. yeah. So, and that, that, that letter needs to be translated. So. We need to go to translation. Yeah, center. okay, yeah. Then right. I asked her, so can I come back alone? Because I don't want to carry, uh, you know. Yes, baby, and paperwork, time. yeah. She said no problem. Oh, that's good. That's flexible, at but least. Today is just that she received the paperwork. Or to get back to that, I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you. Aunt Yegi's giving him a bit of a talking to, he's just waking up. But I uh, hope you enjoyed that one guys. Till next time, see you later. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. As always, a huge thank you to our patrons for helping make these videos possible.